The economy loop entire pro sport bike division has been full of surprises and youthful charges taking first time race wins in 2024. Through injuries, cross country travel and fighting off the youth movement, veteran Sebastian Trombley has set himself up at the iconic corners of Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for a title clinching weekend. Can anyone put a halt to the Quebecois Elder Statesman's Championship aspirations? Tire warmers off, gloves on, put it in gear. Let's go racing at CTMP. Marshall Ferguson alongside Colin Fraser as we are here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. It is round number five, race number nine of 12 in the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship. Economy Loop Entire Pro Sport Bike Division. Sebastian Tremblay, an opportunity to win the title here this weekend, but qualification Colin did not go the way he thought it would. Qualifying was short due to an incident with Thomas Kazaz, and that gave us a very jumbled up grid. So everybody's waiting to see what happens with Tremblay and several of the strong midfield guys are hoping to go with him as he marches to the front. One of those hoping to go with Sebastian Tremblay to the front. Jody Christie, one of the fan favorites around here, Colin. Yeah, he certainly had some success in sport bike. He was a champion in that class. He was a super bike champion, as you can see, 10 years ago. He uh, works in the oil fields in Alberta, but he's taken the opportunity to ride Ben Young's uh, GSXR from Daytona. And you got to mention Alex Michel, strong effort from him. The times are all over the place here after a very complicated qualification as Philip de Gamma Blanchett lines up there. You see Matthew Simpson back on the grid, and there's Tremblay sitting back on row number four. Yeah, you bet Simpson's going to try and go with Tremblay. And when, funny, you know, in our last round in Shubenacne, Tremblay qualified poorly, this time different circumstances. But once again, he's going to have to cut through the pack and see how far he can get. Andrew Van Winkle on row number six. Didn't even get a chance to set a time here as we look at CTMP. Yeah, uh, daunting layout here, uh, built around the hills, taking advantage of the natural terrain. First constructed in the early 60s, always been a popular bike track, had all kinds of world championship events in its history, and of course, a centerpiece of CSBK for well over 20 years. 5A, B, and C on these sport bikes in the middleweight class. It'll be entertaining. Let's go down to our Bridgestone pair reporter, Sarah said. Thanks, guys. The starting grid for round five of the Bridgestone CSBK championship looks quite different than expected as the qualifying round was cut short due to a red flag here at CTMP affecting a number of top riders. Those riders had yet to fully push in the wet conditions and were cut short as the 15 minute session was stopped just prior to the halfway point. This included Sebastian Tremblay, whose hopes of clinching a second career title will take a hit as he starts 11th and on the middle of the fourth row for Turcotte Performance Suzuki. Tremblay will need to fight his way through the pack, but he says he's still confident he can make it despite the setback. Back to you. Thank you, Sarah. As we see the front row of Trevor Daly there on the one-speed Suzuki alongside Jody Christie and Maverick Sear on the Ducati as well. We look to the Apex Cycle starting lights powered by Honda. And we're full throttle at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Maverick Sear, a bit of a wheel hop off the start as to the outside goes Trevor Daly. Out of nowhere, Elia Vieira splits in between Jody Christie and Maverick Sear. They'll exit turn one, wheel to wheel, leaning on each other. Trevor Daly up the hill with Vieira. Vieira off the inside, didn't work. He actually dropped back to third, and that's uh, Christie on the other GSXR in fourth. Tremblay already up to fifth. What a start. They are hopping all the way up into turn number three right now as it is Daly out in front of Sear, Vieira looking on the outside here through turn number four. Daly versus Vieira reminds us of Zoak versus McCormick over a decade ago, some uh, old school hard riding right off the bat. Down the hill once again, Vieira as this field is tightening up on the front here through lap number one. Tremblay all the way up into fourth right now. Yeah, once again, the uh, poor grid position didn't hurt him a bit. A little bit of drama there, a couple of Kawasaki's maybe not taking the traditional line. You can see the pack is broken up a bit and it's Phil de Gamma Blanchette is leading the second wave, if you will, in about eighth position. What a ride here down the Andretti Strait as they try to draft off of each other. They'll come over the top of the hill. Maverick Sear is into first place. Trevor Daly fading now, and even Vieira looking 
on the outside and looks like he makes the pass on Daly as well. Got to mention, Matt Simpson is at the back of this lead group and he's on maybe the fifth engine on that Yamaha R6. So really good for Simpson, who has been a crew chief so far this year, hasn't been racing. Sebastian Tremblay on that Turcotte Performance Suzuki makes the pass on Daly as well. He's up into third already after qualifying back in 11th. As now we see the start with Tremblay trying to track his way through the field. Our editor has very thoughtfully given us the highlight of Tremblay. You watch, it wasn't that great a start, but he just keeps coming. The gearing is a little different on that Suzuki 750. And look at this, wow. he just rails past. Now the onboard's really going to show that Simpson on our left laying on our right and then there's wheel on another Kawasaki and we just keep coming and another Kawasaki in front with Phil and uh, what an amazing effort he's in uh, well he's about to be in fourth because uh, the Gamma Blanchette drifted a little wide there really strong amazing effort by Tremblay. Incredible to see him hold the angle of the bike through as well so much commitment from Sebastian Tremblay but what else should we expect after the number of successful outings he's had on that Suzuki this year. Ducati, Ducati, Suzuki, Suzuki, Suzuki. So if you're wondering about the new generation rules, three GSX-R 750s in the top five, one of them ridden by a guy who has not been in this class for a decade. As Elliot Vieira takes the lead away from Maverick Sear on the Economy Lube and Tire Ducati, slides his way up into first position, does Vieira after an exceptional start coming from sixth all the way up into that lead pack. And Andrew Van Winkle has made his way all the way up into seventh as well after not registering a qualification time. Yeah, so that that is an equally remarkable effort from the very back of the grid from a guy who just didn't get out in time because that session was so short and stopped because of an incident with TV Tommy Kazaz, who has opted not to ride this class. He was supposed to ride Brad and Crazy Emma. A tremendous start here to the first race of the weekend for the sport bike division. Elliot Vieira leads. Portions of the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship are brought to you in part by Importations Tebow, Joe Rocket, and EBC Brakes and Clutches. Closed captioning for the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship is brought to you in part by Apex Cycle, BS Battery, MotorcycleCourse.com, and Revs for Red. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park as down the Andretti Street we go once again. Elliot Vieira out in front of Maverick Sear and Sebastian Tremblay, but Tremblay immediately looking on the outside here of Sear who will get the spot under braking. Looks like Tremblay still second. Well, we've got a 955cc Desmo Ducati twin and a 750cc conventional across the frame four cylinder Suzuki. And man, there is not much to pick, but look at Sear dive wow. under. That is aggressive. What a move there by Maverick Sear leading onto the front straight as he takes back that second spot. Vieira is out in front, and now he's going to have Tremblay in behind him again, taking back second position. Tremblay showing how easy it is to make the pass if you get the drive and you just let the gears play out and you go by now at the top of two, almost three abreast there. Sear looking really tight, no room really using as much of the road as you could. Vieira, I think, uh, guarding the inside just a little bit. Wow, and Sear beyond track limits there in third place. Pretty exciting stuff. And drop off a cliff to the bottom of two and start a little bit of a climb back up the hill here is Elliot Vieira, who's led several races this year, trying to close the deal, but Tremblay all over his rear tire right now. Well, you know Tremblay's motivation is he doesn't want to see anything more of Sear, right? So he's feeling that pressure. The good news is no one can handle pressure the way Tremblay can, certainly not in the sport bike category. And I think that uh, Tremblay battling these Ducatis is what everybody really wanted to see. And we've been uh, you know, talking so much about seeing Vieira versus Tremblay. We haven't seen it much this year, but this is the battle we expect. See in the background there, Trevor Daly, who is our pole sitter in fourth position as he comes through. But this lead pack of three, Vieira, Tremblay, Sear, out in front and setting the pace right now as Tremblay tries to get rid of at least one of these two caddies with Maverick Sear, but he looks like he's latching onto the back just like Tremblay is looking down on Elliot Vieira. And we see how strong Tremblay has been to the bottom of turn number one as well at the end of this front straight. Got to mention Daly, he just set his fastest lap of the race and it's pretty close to what the leaders are doing. So a strong effort. Remember, he's only competed in one weekend so far. We're working lap number five now here in round five at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. A great look back from Sebastian Tromble in the Turcotte Performance Suzuki at the 
Ducati of Maverick Seer hopping his way down through turn number two. And Seer very aggressive slides it up all the way into first as Elliot Vieira all of a sudden is realizing that his Ducati teammate is alongside and Trombley trying to take advantage of both of these Ducatis battling. Yeah, third into first is not easily done, but look at that Vieira at the top of the chute. That is a ballsy move. Incredible Maverick Seer trying to take that away as Elliot Vieira back up into first here. Tromblay sticking around. There you see Trevor Daly, and then it's Jody Christie in fifth, Matthew Simpson in sixth, and Andrew Van Winkle holding on to seventh. Yeah, lots of good racing right into the top ten here, and uh, this is what we expected to see, but Tromblay continuing to try and fight through these Ducatis. He hasn't hit the point for any length of time yet, but he's trying. Seer once again a bit of a different line than Sebastian Tremblay as they continue to sort through where they are strongest on this iconic track at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. As now Seer, who made the pass on the inside earlier, goes to the outside and then cuts across the front of Sebastian Tremblay, who now looks at him, drafts and heads down into turn one to begin lap six. Yeah, I don't think Tremblay is going to be happy. That was just the tiniest bit sloppy. We hardly ever see him make a mistake. He probably figured that's good because it was the Seer line, but Seer was ready to pounce and. Here we go on board with Tremblay looking backwards. He's a little bit wide, and Sear just keeps coming. Sear sees the opening, and he doesn't hesitate. You can see that. He didn't leave him much room. That could have been a calamity. That could have been real messy, but the aggression of Maverick Sear you have to identify and appreciate as he did turn his helmet a little bit, try to figure out the angle, but slide in the rear end of that Ducati into the corner. Maverick Sear as aggressive as can be here at CTMP. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. We are on lap number seven here as Elliot Vieira is still out in front of Maverick Sear and Sebastian Tromble as they continue to battle back and forth, up and down a chaotic race as we get things going here on Saturday at CTMP, Colin. Tremblay is regrouping, so a little bit of drama. Oh, that didn't sound right to me, Marshall. Yeah, what's happening here is it looks- Oh, we're missing Daly. Very Trevor Daly, it looks like he's dropping down the order. We'll see if we can get a shot of him here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Where would he, yes, there is Daly on the one-speed Suzuki, and he is in pain trying to crawl away from the racing line. That is an odd place to fall. I heard the tire spin, so I think he lost the back end, but he's pretty far out of the turn. Look at him sliding there. He almost saves it, but he gets flipped off the low side. Fortunately, he goes on to the little bit of grass verge there, but you can see that battle for what is now fourth was very close behind him. And a dangerous spot to be, obviously, as thankfully Andrew Van Winkle did see him and Trevor Daly onto his feet. Good to see that as the battle continues up at the front as Vieira, Sear, and Tremblay go after each other lap after lap as we reach the midway point of this race. And the Daly story was a good one, right? He was in fourth, and I think he was trying to catch them. I don't know if he would have, but he was making a strong effort. Look at Tremblay on his Suzuki 750, ducking underneath Sear. And these two need to be careful because they are wasting each other's time. And if Vieira had his act together, he'd get away. And we've seen Vieira get away here at CTMP. Well, time and tires because Patrick Sear is using up every single part of those Bridgestones that he possibly can to track down Elliot Vieira, who continues to lead up front. And now we see even a different line climbing up the hill into 5A from Sear. And we see in other forms of racing, right, trying to figure out how hard you can push that tire. And the guy who's great at judging is Tremblay, and he's watching Sear just beating the living heck out of those Bridgestones. Maverick Sear with his fastest lap of the race, a 124.632, a lap and a half ago as they head down the Andretti Straight. And you see Elliot Vieira with smooth sailing in front, but chaos brewing behind. Yeah, and it's impressive how fast these 955 Ducati twins are. That didn't seem much different on board from watching a superbike. As they climb their way towards the start finish straight to begin lap number nine here, the economy loop Ducati of Elliot Vieira trying to separate himself once again. It's a beautiful day at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and getting lots of grip out of these tires, as I mentioned, in the heat and the sun after a very rainy and chaotic qualification. Last year, we see saw Vieira and Tremblay have a great battle. Back then, uh, Tremblay was on a GSX-R 600, not a 750. Two years ago, Vieira ran away and won on a Yamaha 600. So Vieira certainly has the pedigree. This seems to be his favorite venue. At this point, Colin, do you believe that Sebastian Tremblay is settling into race pace and, and just trying to keep everything close in front? of him because it seemed like he was trying to stretch and get away from these guys earlier on and maybe now he's just realizing well this is what this race is going to be. No I think you're right on the money there he's decided he can't break through and he needs to pace himself and needs to figure out the tires let the fuel load drop a bit but he knows his target is Vieira. Remember a year ago Sear was winning amateur races here he's battling for the lead in amateur whereas Vieira
Riviera and uh, Tremblay are well-established adversaries. As you see, the one-speed Suzuki of Trevor Daly pulled off to the side there on 5C, and now a pass down the straight they go, as it is Tremblay past Sear, and then almost trading back the draft to Sear a little bit early as they climb all the way up towards the start-finish straight. Yeah, really good drama there between second and third place. And I would assume at this point, Tremblay's decided that he can split the Ducatis because that's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to have to deal with both of them at the same time. And so far, every time he's got by Sear, Sear has gone completely all out to immediately pass back. But this time, it looks like Tremblay may have, I don't know if he's broken Sear's spirit or if Sear has, Sear has an issue, but definitely Tremblay is on the hunt for his uh, normal sparring partner, who is Vieira on the leading Ducati. If there was any comms other than the pit board, maybe they'd be telling Elliot Vieira, hey, just, just stay away from these guys that are in behind you. They are battling as hard as they possibly can at a tremendous venue. Sebastian Tremblay trying to track down Vieira when we return. Portions of the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship are brought to you in part by Importation Stebo, Joe Rocket, and EBC Brakes and Clutches. Lap number 12 of 16 here is in the background. You can see Mavericks here really falling off the pace and it looked like he was actually looking down at his bike at one point there, Colin. He's dealt with some issues throughout this year mechanically. Yeah, he was looking on the left side at his left foot and I think that's probably to do with the clutch and the transmission and that has been a bugaboo for them. They had some trouble with that at Edmonton back in June. So that's unfortunate because Sear was definitely the catalyst to some great action and now Tremblay is leading from Vieira and Vieira needs to figure this out. Well, certainly with Sear out of the picture, it looks like Sebastian Tremblay's comfort level of going one-on-one -on -one a little bit higher than it was when he was trying to battle both of these two caddies. So the Turcotte performance, Suzuki takes the top spot, powerful through turn number one and heads over the hill in two. Well, as the security services would say, these two are known to each other. They are well aware of how they ride. They've uh, definitely had some previous battles. Now we're on board with Tremblay Suzuki. They across the frame four cylinder, showing very well in the draft to slipstream by that twin cylinder Ducati that has a little bit more displacement. But I am impressed by how equal these bikes are. These are the Gen 2 motorcycles, right? These uh, rules have just come about in the last couple of years that allowed these bikes to join the more 600-ish conventional group from the original set of rules. Oh man, and that is Philip de Gamma Blanchette, who was sitting down in ninth position, now drops to 10th and chasing after his bike. And did he go off at turn two down the hill? That is the very bottom of two, and he probably washed it out at the top, and it's uh, it takes a lot of time to slow down there. I, I know how dramatic that stop can be. And a long slide as well for that Kawasaki 636 all the way down the hill is now, it looks like the leaders will come up over the top and go past the place that PDB just went down. And it's going to be a challenge here for Vieira because he knows that he's... Whoa! Whoa! Big moment for Tremblay there. He was bucked out of the seat. He has used that Bridgestone extensively. We only have a couple laps to go, but man, did he spin... The, look at that. He's spinning the tire again. This is Tremblay right at the edge of what he's capable of. It's great to see him riding this hard. I think this shows you how much he took out of the tire at the start of the race battling Sear. And maybe Vieira recognizing that as well. Got on the throttle real hard coming through turn number three and actually had a little bit of a wiggle himself. So now they'll get into the draft down the Andretti straight and see what Vieira can do trying to track down Tremblay. Yeah, Vieira was briefly out of the seat when he picked up the throttle in 5B. That's when you have to get the drive, when you have to be perfection, and he did not get it, so he knows this probably isn't the lap that can lead the slipstream. He only has a couple more, so right now he's practicing. Can he get by? And this is often a function of gearing. Did you put enough gearing on the bike that you can pull out of the draft when you shift into six at maximum revs? matching each other step for step all the way up that back straight as they head towards the start finish once again to begin lap number 15 of 16 here at CTMP and as they cross the line they're both running in the 124 eights on that last lap. And, and you got to think right now, Tremblay's thinking, whatever I did at the bottom of two last time, I better not do it this time. And Andrew Van Winkle makes a move up into fourth past Jody Christie. A great battle here for fourth position, which was once owned by Trevor Daly before he went off the bike. And so on the Scott Belt Suzuki, Jody Christie, is sitting in fourth, but continues to battle against Van Winkle. And I think that just demonstrates that the 750 has a little more torque, a little more drive, but look at that Van Winkle trying everything at the top of two. That's Jordan Zoke's favorite passing spot. Look at those two Suzuki side by side, spy versus spy. This is good stuff, and Matt Simpson has the best seat. Yeah, Matthew Simpson thinking about maybe making a move up into fourth. If anything happens between these two, is Christie 
continues to try and find a way around Van Winkle as we go on board once again with the 21. Yeah, last time that uh, Christie was running at the front here, Van Winkle was six or seven years old. So uh, interesting contrast. It's not that Jody's old, it's just that Van Winkle is that young. And Van Winkle, when you watch the way he rides this thing, especially heading down the back straight, it looks like he's absolutely going to rip the grips off of his throttle because he goes after that bike and gets as much out of it as he can. You see Van Winkle off the line. There's a door open, but Christie is ready and he pounces. He gets the drive. As I said, the GSX-R750 has a little bit more mid-range and torque. And you can see Van Winkle having a really good look at the side of Christie's motorcycle. But look at this, his drive out of one for Van Winkle must have been fantastic because he jams his way under Christie again offline at the top of two. And Van Winkle just keeps fighting back. He really doesn't have much material to work with, but he keeps managing to so something together. And we are on the final lap here. White flag is out for race number nine in the Economy Lube and Tire Pro Sport Bike Division as Sebastian Tremblay leads out in front of Elliot Vieira. Mavericks here fading back and they come up on some back markers. The traffic here on the back straight, Colin. And got to mention that Tremblay had a great last lap and he got a little bit clear, but right now Vieira's coming uh, and he knows that and they're making the pass on the back marker is crucial as we uh, head into our last couple of turns and right now Tremblay probably expects that that has played out just the way it does and that is Vieira's been slightly held up. But look at this, he's still going to try and pick them off. Yeah, and Tremblay will jam it down the inside and secure another Another victory in this pro sport bike division 2024 fired up on the Turcot performance Suzuki he earned that one all the way home Sebastian Tremblay not an emotional man but he is really excited and he deserves to be what a fantastic effort great ride by Vieira too but you know Vieira who hasn't won this year has to be so frustrated to be constantly in a comparison situation with Tremblay and always coming up just a millimeter short ride down the hill one more time in turn number two. We look at the final standings. Kind of easy to ignore Sear who faded back, but still a solid third. That great battle, Christy winding up in front of Van Winkle. Souza, who's the owner of the uh, Van Winkle bike, getting up to six, another strong effort for him. Simpson fades back to 10th, and Louis Rappel was laughed on his Ducati back from his shoulder injury. Let's go down to our Bridgestone pit reporter, Sarah Sarah, with our winner. Sebastian, congratulations on the big win. How does it feel? Uh, it feels awesome. After uh, uh, pretty weird qualifying yesterday. I had my work cut out uh, for in the beginning for sure. But I mean, I did a, uh, an awesome lap. Uh, awesome first lap uh, to be able to get, get in third uh, out of the first lap. It was quite incredible. When I took the lead and tried to keep it uh, until the end, uh, there was a few greasy spots on the racetrack, but uh, we were able to still go pretty fast. So I kept him uh, behind me for uh, uh, until the last lap. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Three races remain this season, 79 points available, and John Lang sits 67 behind Tremblay, Colin. Lang was seventh, and that's not going to do it, and Tremblay really has this thing wrapped up. What a performance, particularly given he was hurt for part of the season. And look at this, Suzuki's walked the championship in terms of the constructors, but Kawasaki and Ducati, that is literally nothing in it. They are battling for second spot. There is your podium here from race number nine. It's Sebastian Tremblay, Elliot Vieira, Maverick Sear in an outstanding pro sport bike race at CTMP.